Welcome! Today I will bring you 7 tips and tricks that the real pros use that you can start using straight away to win more matches in Rainbow Six Siege. All tips in this video is from the Pro League match between BRK and MOPA from the Latin America Rainbow Six Siege Invitational Qualifiers. If you like this kind of videos and want more tips and tricks from the Pro League matches, please leave a like and with that, let's jump straight into tip number one. White, as they look to see if there's anybody by pillar, but nope, not at the moment. It does actually look like Navi's is on site, so you have the Ella sticking pretty closely nearby. A phone is available to be picked up by Sexy Cake if need be, but in this case, he's simply waiting. No, it actually looks like the Ella is upstairs in Visa, so it was the Valkyrie that was oh. sitting down on site and poised to strike inside of Visa. The Mira is going to try to repel that push. This is taking them far, far too long to try and open up this garage all the way, and they're stalled quite badly. But look at that. Navi's was coming in on the flank, and Sexy Cake was there, and the second Logic Bomb is now going to go out, so they'll instead use it to try and figure out the locations of the anchors and site players as they push inside Zig and Nesk able to eliminate Diogo and one and it's PX against the world he is able to take down Nesk and primes a C4 but nothing with it as it looks like it clips the ceiling diffuser goes off in front of that white van and his job has just become a lot more difficult there isn't much left of Zig so it's technically going to be a 2v1 in terms of health, but keep in mind we've seen a lot of operators with very little HP still able to get that frag, because even if you've got one HP, a headshot is still a headshot. He'll get pre-fired as he crawls his way out of the hole inside a cafeteria and pushes into the back of Garage. There is a flank watch currently from Sexy Cake, but that Vector isn't going to have the same amount of distance as he is staring down the barrel with a hollow against a bunch of ACOGs. Bleeding out time here. The timer will just now hit it. He's not able to defuse, but Sexy Kick gets the kill anyway, and Mopa takes that round. And this was a very smart strategy where they combined both Sophia and Dukabi to make this Gerch push towards the double mirror works really well. So what they did, they had Dukabi up here in yellow stairs watching this flank, and with her secondary, it's very lethal on close range, so very good to keep tight angles here with her. And then, when the time started to go down, and they're going to make your push, she pulled up her tablet, made a logical bomb go, so all the defenders' phones started ringing. To make it easy for attackers to locate them. Then she went down here, quickly threw a smoke here, to disable this mirror window. So that mirror window was completely covered in smoke. Then they had one more mirror window back here. Then we had Sophia playing out here. So when this first mirror window was covered in smoke, they just had one more here. And they had a drone up on this van who have cleared that no one was playing back here. So what they did, they just shot a concussion aid straight towards that mirror window. And when she was out of it, they just waited in, planted right behind his white van in cover because they know that this was cleared and then got an easy win. So that's a very good use of both Sophia's gadgets and Dukabi to get the logical bomb off so the phone start ringing, F using Dukabi's very powerful smoke grenades to smoke off one Mira, then Sophia's concussion aid to get rid of the other one, and then just plant in all that chaos that comes with smokes and concussion grenades. So very smart strategy, very good use of the two new operators in a single push towards this garage. They bond again and kill Navi's shoot open that wall just inside of blue through the long angle sitting inside of Moto. And what little is left of Cyber will have to try to deal with opening that wall up. Yuke comes right in to try and pick up his teammate, but he'll get shot through the wall as well. And Navi's finishes off bullet before Yuke can get there. So he uses that smoke canister rather than trying to aid his teammate. Probably a smart idea, as they likely both would have been taken down in that ensuing firefight. Nice now throw. Zig trying to repel and a great throw. Wow, Cyber only very smart play from Pauls back here. He had a, a nice setup. He had this wall reinforced. He had a small wall hole here so he can challenge them. He had another hole here to challenge them all the way back there. He had this crouching hole so he can shoot them through the legs when they come through. And of course standard rotation. Then what he also had was this hole up here to, to throw his C4 to land back here. because. What the attackers usually do on this side, they come through down through these stairs, they drop down from the bar, and they breach their way in towards A, the church wall here, and they try to plant it right behind here. 
And when they are standing here, they are very protected because the feathers need to rush out from church or rush down this hallway to get them when they're standing here. So what he did, he used this hole that he have open, and you can see this wall behind that wall is where they are standing. So he just took his C4 and throw it. And you see it lands perfectly here. So when they're trying to breach this wall and go inside, they're going to die. Mission for both cash and master, which is something we've seen happen before, or cash rather an office. But in this case, oh. we won't get to see how sexy cake is of match point. And still, they do have bullet uke and nest available. Who last time around on the site were able to do good work, but cyber was their kryptonite. On Clubhouse, the vertical gameplay is very important, and when the defenders are trying to hold the bar, they only have that many places to sit. And here you can use this vertical gameplay to really flush them out. So some common positions where you usually find defenders, in this corner, the duke box, in this corner, and behind the bar. Also sometimes playing in this corner. That's some of the most common spots where you will find the defenders. But if you as an attacking team have established dominance of the top floor, so you have clear the top floor, you have someone watching the flank here, you can just open up this roof here and have excellent angles down, making sure that you flush the defenders out of their favorite positions. For example, with this hole right next to the counter here, you can see all the way back here, the stairs is a uke box. You can also, if you go from this side, see this corner and you can also see some of the bar then you can also open up on the other side here where you get an even better position on the bar making it impossible for them to sit there and you can also see all the way back to the boxes there so using holes like this is very useful you can, of course the other places you can have them is so either if you open the hatch or if you just open for example like this you can get some good angles down also but making sure that you own the top floor is very important when trying to take the bar on clubhouse round and when they started to lag behind you swapped off and started playing bandit the moment yeah. it stopped working and this is a very smart way to conceal your ally mines to make sure that the attackers can't shoot them away what you usually see, for example, this objective, you see a ally throw a mine like this, or above, like that. But the problem is that if the attackers, for example, come through here, or up the stairs, they can easily just shoot them out, bam bam, no problem. But what they did here instead, you shoot away part of the floor, and you just throw it down there, because this way it's concealed so you can't see it when they're pushing for example here they can't shoot it away they can't see it so they're just gonna wall straight in and just trigger that mine so this is a very useful way to conceal your ella mines so that the attackers can't shoot them away and can't really see them so they're not suspecting them you get that tight positioning where you're nearby to hear them because they're all turtled up right so you might catch a roamer or two and that might be useful but it's gonna be hard to say if it's gonna be effective he probably will play it at least so when you do something a lot, you develop habits. And when you play Siege a lot, you develop habits on how you play this game. And we want good habits to win more games. And this is an example of something very simple, but a very good habit he has. When he's coming here, he has pre-fired a few shots in here from the garage door. And there's a really good reason why he did that. Down here in the garage, you will usually find a roamer. If they're defending garage, of course this would be reinforced, so this is useless. But if they're in archives, if they're in on top floor, if they're anywhere else in this building, you will usually find a roamer here. Trying to control this yellow stairs, trying to control this garage entry, and standing behind his white one because it's a very protected position for the defender. He can easily escape, if he has rotation hole, he can easily escape, and he has good control and good cover. So you usually find one here, and when you shoot these bullets straight through here, they will land on him. So either you will tag him and bring his down his health, or at least you will scare him out of here. Because if you're standing here as a defender, roaming, lurking, trying to catch someone off guard, and they start shooting through the wall at you, I'm pretty sure that you will leave this position and go somewhere else. 
It's a very good habit just to shoot a few shots in through that door, hopefully get a few hits in. If nothing else, you just wasted a few bullets, but hey, we got pretty many of them. Okay, who seem a little listless at the moment, especially 30 seconds has been spent. Yep. This is a very easy play, but still so smart. You just vault up here, you see a shot a hole here. And when you're standing up here, you can see all the way back to the door here, when they're pushing blue from garage. And this spot is not perfect in any way, but it's one big benefit to it. Because usually, when you defenders open holes, they are two-way streets. Attackers can also use them, so it's a give and take. But this hole is absolutely no use for the attackers. If they try to peek here, they only see the roof. There's nothing for them here, except the risk of being shot. So when they're pushed through here, you see that hole is far from invisible for them. So they will see it. But they, and unless you're standing on the boxes, they can't shoot you here. So when they're pushing here, they have no use of that hole, but they still need to keep looking at it. Because at any moment, the defender can just pop back up here and shoot them. So they need to keep an eye on this hole, but they're not getting any use out of it. If, for example, this hole, if you have open this hole, so you're standing and, and peeking them here, that hole can also be used by the attackers on your teammates. So that's a more risky move, but that hole doesn't give them anything back. Just slow peeks that corner and takes the head off a of one, and it looks like they might actually have control of stock. Ness gets hit by the lesion mine, and he goes for some pre-fire just in case the mirror would put, or sorry, rather the Valkyrie would push him, and nobody does. PX still situated just by that machine. Wow. And sexy cake, a 4K so far. It's all up to Cyber now. This is something that you don't see a lot of people do. When they step into the lesion mine here, you have a few choices. Because a lot of time you have Lesion or some of his teammates standing close by, knowing that that mine is there. So as soon as that pops, they're gonna peek you and try to kill you. And in this example, when you're pushing here, you know that there are usually defenders here or back here at the jukebox. That's very common places. And you have three choices here, basically. When you step into the goo mine here, you can either back off and try to pull it out, at risk of getting killed. Or what most people do, they walk into the mine and then they stand like this, waiting for them to peek. But what they did here is far better. As soon as they went into the goo mines, they knew where will they come. They will come from this most common spot. So they started pre-firing straight away to get them as soon as they peeked out. And that way you have the advantage because you know after the mine went that they're gonna peek you. You know most of the time where they're gonna peek you from and you can pre-fire them because you already have your sights out you don't need to run out as they have so that way you can turn a disadvantage to an advantage when you have the pre-fire possibility against them when they come out to kill you that's it for this time what tip did you like the most will you bring some of these tips and tricks to your next ranked match let me know down in the comments and if you enjoyed the video please leave a like as it's really helping me out and if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit subscribe for more Rainbow Six Siege videos just like this one. I will see you next time.